our message today is all centered around one verse, which is Philippians 4, verses 13. Now, you've probably heard it, you've read it, many of you have probably even memorized it, and it reads like this in the New King James Version. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Amplified Bible expands upon the text this way. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. That really takes it to the limit of what you are able to do through Jesus. So be honest with me. Can you do all things? Well, most people would say, well, I can do some things, but I can't do all things. But God is saying, you can do all things. So as we begin this year, you know, after two years with things all around us being stolen and being limited and controlled and censored, you know, can we believe that in this year, 2022, that we can do all things? Well, it probably depends upon whether or not you really want to. We usually can do, we're able to do those things that we want to do that are important to us. You know, if it's something that you want with all of your heart, it's really important to you, you're probably going to be able to do it. But if you don't care, then you're probably not going to be able to do it. Now, through the years, I have learned that if you're facing a problem, Things will get better faster if you stop saying you can't when you should be saying you won't. When you replace I can't with I won't, you've got a better idea of what you're really dealing with inside that mind of yours. For example, if we say I can't forgive someone or I can't find time to read the Bible, or I can't witness to strangers. Well, if we were to substitute I can't with I won't, then you're probably identifying what's really going on and what is the truth of the matter. I won't forgive someone. I won't find time to read the Bible. I won't witness to strangers. You know, for most of us, can't is just an, a convenient excuse for things that we won't do. So back to our original question. Can you do all things? And the answer is yes if you want to. And to really understand what Paul is teaching us here, we've got to put this verse, verse 13, into context. And to put it into context, context, we've got to include the previous two verses, verses 11 and verses 12. So let me read you Philippians chapter 4, verses 11, 12, and 13. The New Living Testament. Not that I was ever in need, 
For I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or with little. For I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Now God, God's not really expecting you to do all things. But he does want you to do those things that he is directing you to do. For whatever reason that he is calling upon you to do those things. So I'm going to read you the expanded, amplified version of Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Paul speaking. Not that I speak from any personal need, for I have learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ. Satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or uneasy, regardless of my circumstances. I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times, and I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing life, whether well-fed or going hungry, whether having an abundance or being in need. I can do all things which he has called me to do, through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and, and confident peace. Well, that's the kind of peace that God has got in store for all of us, that kind of confident peace. Sometimes life can be difficult. And when it is, according to the Amplified translation, we should be content. According to the Amplified translation, because regardless of what we're going through, Christ is with us. For example, sometimes I feel like I'm on top of the world, and sometimes I feel like I can't get a break. I've gone through years without ever missing a paycheck, and then there were times I didn't have a job. I've eaten like a king, and I've had nothing on my plate. I've had money in the bank, and I've been flat broke. Philippians 4, 13 encourages me that no matter what life throws at me, I've learned to be content. And I've learned that I can get through it. I've learned through the power of Jesus Christ that I can face whatever comes my way. If it's good, I can enjoy it. If it's not so good, I can deal with it. Because I have access to the power and the strength of Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, you can do everything. You can do everything that God wants you to do. You can face everything that he wants you to face. You can fight every battle that he wants you to fight. You can obey every command, you can endure every trial, and you can overcome every temptation through Jesus Christ. If God is in it, you can do it. If God is in your difficulty, you can face it. If God is in your failure, 
you will overcome it. If God is in your dreams, those dreams are going to come true. If God is in your goals, you can achieve every single one of them. If God is in your prayers, he will answer them. So to answer the question again, can you really do all things? Yes, you can, if God wants you to. That's called the principle of divine direction. In this verse, Philippians 4.13, the principle of divine direction is accompanied by the principle of divine enablement. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God created us to be overcomers. And as we experience problems in our life, Jesus will pour out his strength so that we can conquer them. Facing life and accomplishing things through Jesus Christ and his strength is very different than trying to face life and accomplish things through the power of positive thinking. Amen. Worldly encouragers advise you to think positively, to rely on yourself, your knowledge, your strengths, your skills, and your connections. But God says, have faith, believe in him, Rely on him, rely on his son, Jesus, and his strength, and his knowledge, and his wisdom. Positive thinking has become a very humanistic teaching here in the world. But how far does positive thinking get you when you lose your job? When your spouse leaves you? when the stock market crashes, or when your daughter decides she wants to get an abortion, where's the hope? What will you cling to? How will you find the strength to go on? Where is your contentment? And what are you going to anchor your soul to? It takes more than positive thinking. You've got to have Jesus Christ. Having Jesus walk us through the valleys of life, that doesn't really mean that you're better than anybody else. It doesn't mean that we're smarter. It doesn't mean that we're stronger. God does not give us a free pass. He doesn't give us a free pass so that what happens to other people don't happen to us because we are believers, we are Christians. Uh, just look at 2021. Were you exempt from the coronavirus? I don't think so. We suffer heartaches, disappointments, just like everybody else. We endure suffering, sadness, opposition, anything and everything that someone else suffers and goes through, we can suffer it also. But what makes the difference? One thing, Jesus Christ. We have the power of Christ who strengthens us. Now Paul addressed this even further in Romans 8.35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? All these things also happen to the children of God. But none of these things can separate us 
None of these things can separate us from the love of Christ. We are bound by him, to him, by a love that nothing can sever. Is Jesus enough for the problems of life? Yes, he is. A thousand times yes. He's more than enough. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God. The love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paul never says that Jesus is our get-out-of-jail card. Jesus will not keep us out of trouble. But Paul does say that he will never leave us, even if we are in trouble. You can do all things if you rely and trust in Jesus. Instead of your own strength, instead of your own wisdom, instead of your own power, instead of your own ability to figure things out. If you can rely on Jesus, you can do all things through him who strengthens you. It all comes down to choice. Are you going to live your life by your own strength, like the world lives? Or are you going to put your faith and your trust in Jesus in 2022? Now, many people live in the past. They're trapped in their past. But Paul is telling us, Forget your past. You don't live there anymore. It's over. It's done. It's finished. It's gone. You can't go back, even if you wanted to. No. So the first rule of spiritual progress that I want you to learn in 2022 is this. I can't go back. I can't stay here. I must go forward. All right. I want you to repeat those with me. I can't go back. I can't stay here. I must go forward with Jesus Christ, right? There is no reverse gear in your spiritual life. The river of God's purpose, it only flows in one direction, and that's forward. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm not saying I can do all things, because that would be a boaster. I'm not saying I can do some things, because that would be a doubter. I'm saying... I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Those are the words of a believer. You can do everything that God wants you to do. Can you fulfill the will and the plans that he has for your life in 2022? Yes, you can through Jesus Christ who strengthens you. You can obey every command, you can endure every trial, you can overcome every temptation. Now, when you were a child, you probably read, or maybe your mother read to you, the childhood classic, the story called The Little Engine That Could. What you may not know is the story is based upon a sermon by Reverend Charles S. Wing in the 1920s. And he gave it to the Nordstrand Avenue Methodist Episcopal Church in Brooklyn, New York. The story teaches children the value of optimism and perseverance and hard work and believing in oneself. In the story, the
The boys and girls living in a town on the other side of a mountain are waiting for the train to come with all their toys. The train was filled with teddy bears and dolls and stuffed animals. There were baskets filled with food and candy, red cheeked apples, big golden oranges, bottles of milk, peppermint drops, and lollipops. But there was a mountain in the way. To get to the town, you had to overcome the mountain. The train would have to go up, up, up the mountain. And then go down, down, down the other side before they could get to the town. It was not an easy thing to do. When the train carrying all of the toys came to the last stop before having to go up the mountain, the engine broke down. The engineer looked for a substitute, looked for another engine to carry the load of toys, the train load of toys over the mountain. So he goes to the roadhouse and he asks several engines but none of them would take the task of taking these toys up and over the mountain. One big shiny engine said that he only carries passenger trains. The diesel locomotive didn't want to be bothered with a load of toys. And one by one, all the big engines said no. And then from the corner of the roadhouse came a voice. I'll do it. It was the little blue switch engine. I'll carry the train with the toys over the mountain to the boys and girls on the other side. But you're much too small. I'm willing to give it a try, said the little blue engine. So they hooked up the little engine to the train with the toys. And that's where the drama begins. The little engine began to gather steam in order to climb up and over the mountain. Puff, puff, chug, chug, puff, puff, chug, chug. You remember your mother reading you that. As it gathered speed, the little engine began to say to itself, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Getting a little bit faster and a little bit faster. Up the mountain it went, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. At last, Straining with every ounce of energy it could muster, the train cleared the crest and started back down the other side. Seeing the train in the distance, the children cheered and waved and danced with joy. Down the mountain came the train with the little engine saying to itself, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. Most of you right now may be facing your own mountain. We just got through 2020 and 2021. Maybe you're facing a marital crisis or a financial difficulty. Perhaps your doctor has given you some bad news. Some of you have expressed that your jobs may be in trouble. Maybe you are facing what seems to be an impossible task. The mountain in front of you seems so high. So high and so steep that you're tempted to give up without even trying. The lesson that we can learn from Philippians 4.13 is that if you hook up with Jesus Christ, you can climb that mountain. <laughs> the story of the little engine that could, it's not entirely biblical. 
there are two important differences between the story and the scripture text for today. First, the little engine said, I think I can. But Paul is saying, I know I can. Second, the little engine relied on its own power to get over the mountain, but we rely on a power far greater, far superior, the strength, the wisdom, and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Woo! That's the difference between I think and I know. So can you really do all things? You can if you hook up with Jesus Christ. In 2022, there is no mountain big enough to keep you from all that God has planned for you this year. This is the year of restoration. This is the year for all of us to say, I know I can, I know I can, because Jesus is with me. I am hooked up with Jesus. And it's his plan, and it's his strength, and it's his knowledge and his wisdom that's going to get me through this year of restoration. I think I can now. I know I can. Amen. 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 Amen.